Come on in, everybody. We want to get started with this film. How many people here have read Alternative 3? Oh, not many. So if I said to you, could you stand up and tell me the theme of Alternative 3? Not many people know. Oh, good. Well, I can ramble a bit while people are walking in and tell you about Alternative 3. In the book, in the, in the 70s, a couple of British authors wrote a book called Alternative 3. And they made a... Um, they made a type of science documentary on it, which I believe was screened April 1st. I'm not sure. Maybe the, maybe the next presenter can enlighten me on that. Um, but the thesis of Alternative 3 was that in the future mankind would be likely destroyed and they're looking for three ways, looking for alternatives to save mankind. One is you go underground, one is you go off planet, and I think the other one was you go to Mars. The book was fiction, which upset a lot of people because they felt conspiratorially that the book was on track. I'm just going to pause while people come in. Now, the interesting thing about the book, The Alternative 3, is that although it was fiction, the authors received so much correspondence from people around the world. Shh. The authors of the book Alternative 3 received so much correspondence from people around the world validating many parts of the book. The authors were astonished and they realised that even though it had sought out, started out to be fiction, they'd actually stumbled on a lot of truths. The truths being a secret space program, um, manned expeditions to Mars, Moon and beyond, advanced technology and massive cover-up of all of the above. Now, the authors of Alternative 3 went to India where they were setting about to write a follow-up book. Um, well, we put this in Nexus, I think, 10, 15 years ago because we had correspondence from the authors. And uh, while they were, I think, halfway through the second book to validate that Alternative 3 was actually largely true, even though they hadn't intended it uh, that way, but their work was all stolen. They came back one day to their place in India and all their computers and boxes and boxes and boxes of very important research notes and other bits and pieces that they'd been sent were all taken. So they were never able to finish the second book. But that's the story. But Alternative 3 has inspired many other books, films, writers and researchers. And to some degree, the film you're about to see next has got some of its roots in, um, in Alternative 3. Right, now this is going to be a two-hour segment, so I'm not going to fluff around anymore because I can see most of you in here, but I'm going to call up to the stage, Tonya. You coming up alone? Come up and Who's introduce Frank. Who's, Frank. Who's yeah. coming up to intro? I've got a wild mic. <laughs> Tonya? Anyway, the producers have come all the way from Germany to the Nexus Conference. Um, they are also the producers of Solar Revolution, which we screened here at the conference in 2013. And the film you're about to see is what we reviewed in the December-January issue last year of Nexus, I believe. Anyway, please give Tonya a big hand. She's going to tell you about the film, and then we'll be starting. I think I have a mic. Can you guys hear me okay? It is so exciting to be here. I'm so happy to be here. We'd like to thank Duncan Rose and also Nexus Conference and all the wonderful, amazing Nexus team. I was here at Solar Revolution in our big premiere in 2013, and it's so great to be able to come and share Packing for Mars with you. I'm the executive producer and producer. James L. Stewart, one of our executive producers, is here with us today as well. And we have a very special guest, the director and the writer of Packing for Mars, Frank Jacobs. So I'm actually going to have him quickly introduce the film, and then we'll start the show. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, it's my first time in Australia. <laughs> As Duncan was saying, I've come all the way from Germany, and wow, am I jet lagged. Um, so, yeah, Alternative 3, we heard a little bit about it. Um, it's, for me, uh, kind of the inspiration behind the film, which goes back a long way. And what really interested me, I think, most about that story was the idea that it was so-called fiction or science fiction that I was um, told, who, the person that introduced me to the, uh, the book was telling me that it was actually truth masked as fiction. And uh, I didn't get that. How many people are familiar with Alternative 3 or the book or the film? Okay, there's a few of you out there. I mean, it goes back 40 years. It goes back to a time when 
global warming and, and subjects about you know, the collapse of humanity were pretty new and unheard of en masse. And uh, the authors of that show, which was preceded the actual book, made it because they wanted to use it as a kind of mockumentary to mock people into, believe, into showing them that they'll believe anything that's put out on television. But uh, ironically, when Leslie Watkins then took on the story of writing a much more in-depth and detailed book version of the television program, he was surprised that the reactions he was getting after publishing it were so vehement about him having hit upon the truth. I mean, he was getting politicians calling him up saying, yeah, we know, you know, we know it's true, but you had to write it as fiction. And he was getting scientists and letters from famous researchers, including May Brussel from America, who was calling it the most dangerous book in his library. So I think you know, the, the main thing about the alternatives was the idea of saving humanity, and that was the, the alternatives being you know, cool the planet down by blowing vast holes in the ionosphere. Unfortunately, they didn't have the technology to close them back up again, so they abandoned that. The second one was to build underground facilities for humanity, which they felt was too expensive at the time, although I think some of you know there may already be such facilities in place. And the third alternative, which ironically they chose, was to go off-planet. Now, off-planet was a series of stages. First, from Earth, then to the Moon, and then from the Moon to Mars. And they were using what they called a brain drain, which was kind of the subject behind the stories of the television program and the book, to take the, most, the smartest gifted people off-world to begin setting up this off-world colony. So, you know, we're going to encounter secret space programs, you know, not naturally, for them to keep this secret, it leads to the idea that there was actually a breakaway civilization. That, that means people that seem to have access to technology which we normal folk think of as magic. Just like if we went back with our iPods 50 to 100 years and presented it to someone on the streets in New York, they'd think we're playing with magic too. So the technology these people have in this breakaway civilization is far, far advanced from what we have. And it's the kind of stuff that instead of being iPods and iPads, it's actually teleporters and, you know, uh, time travel machines. So um, I want to don't get too much into the story, but I think it's really a testament and it's a dedication to whistleblowers. Those are the people who we've all heard about recently who have escaped these programs and lived to tell the story. And those are the kind of like the people that are waking us up. Their mission is to come out and to tell us things that we think are impossible, maybe in an effort to try and pull us out of the nosedive that we seem to be in. And uh, I think it also is, says a lot to any one of us, all of those of us who have had family members or friends ridiculing us, who have, are maybe the first people who tune into something before the others, and for many, many years were ridiculed. So the film is really dedicated to them. And it also has a very spiritual and philosophical approach to it, which we felt was important, because when you're dealing with this kind of subject matter, you have to look at the philosophy behind it. You have to look at spirituality. You can't just digest a bunch of information and not think, what are the implications philosophically? What are the implications spiritually? So anyway, without further ado, I think that's about all I think we can say without uh, spoiling too much. Tanya? It's a wild, wild ride down the rabbit hole. And if you, if you enjoy the film, if you like it, and you want to share it with your friends, we've got DVDs available at the booth. We'll even autograph them for you. And again, enjoy the show. Thank <laughs> you.